Hi, my name is Allie. I'm with Oasis Recovery Centers. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Haley. She's just going to tell us a little bit about her life story and her experience here at Oasis. Uh, if you want to just kind of start telling me about yourself, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, in 2001, I was adopted from Russia. I uh, came to the States, you know, lived with two very loving parents, um, both lawyers. Uh, Childhood is really, really good. You know, I had everything that I could possibly want. Um, newest toys, comfy bed to sleep in, huge house over my head. Um, had all the animals I could ever want. And, you know, starting into my teenage years, I started to rebel a lot because I sort of felt like I didn't necessarily fit in. So I put up a mask and I started to create this facade of who I should be or who I was necessarily supposed to be. Continuing, continuing that, um, I was also a professional equestrian as well. I have trained with one of the, most of the top Olympians in the U.S. And oh, wow. that was completely ingrained into me since I was four years old. So that was all I knew. And doing that, um, by the time I was 13, I was, you know, flying down to Florida, living with my 28-year-old trainer. <laughs> And, you know, I got really exposed to the nightlife and drugs and alcohol and everything. And, you know, it was just really physically and mentally draining. So I continued that and then, um, you and know. you were 13 when that started? Yeah, I was 13. Um, then it progressed even more. I got more into the lifestyle and such. Um, everyone in that industry either does coke or has a really bad alcohol habit. So it was very normalized for me and um, always going to VIP parties and stuff, underage drinking and just the whole sort. Then, you know, my family and I, we sort of drifted apart. A lot of fighting started to happen and um, it was more so the pressure of me keeping up the facade of being perfect because I was in the public eye a lot. And I didn't really know how to handle it. So I went to an outlet that was normalized for me, which was drinking. So fast forward to the time I was 17, I was deep into the bottle, um, clutching it every night. I would do anything I could to get my hands on it. Um, from stealing booze from my parents to, you know, going to stores and, you know, God is bad to buy cooking wine. And so then I, I went to rehab for the first time when I was 18, no, I was 19 years old, and then I went to a sober living. I got kicked out of the sober living after two weeks of being there, and then I became homeless on the streets of Richmond, Virginia. I stayed homeless and I did whatever I could to keep myself alive by lying, manipulating, and, you know, just drinking to make it a little more bearable. Stayed homeless for a good close to 10 months uh, living on the streets doing whatever I could to survive then I made the next step to finally say screw it I'm going to rehab I'm done so this was the second time I went to rehab I went to a program called Twin Lakes down in Georgia Monroe um, and I didn't take it seriously at all um, I didn't think I was an addict and you know sitting in a rehab and saying I'm not an addict like <laughs> Yeah, this is more. Anywhere. Yeah, it's not gonna get me anywhere. So, sort of the cycle repeated and repeated and repeated, and my addiction really, really got bad after I was sexually assaulted uh, in 2022. But mm, so, and then my drinking really took off. I felt worthless. I felt used. I, I did everything I could to numb that emotion, and. Then it got worse. I started taking my anger out on people and when I was just the one who was hurting in general. And I didn't know how to deal with it. Then I, I put the bottle down and I, I don't know, I was, I was very, very miserable and I didn't really know how to take charge or how to even take a chance on myself mm -hmm. because in my life, I had done everything for the approval of others, and I never did it for myself. And so coming to Oasis was my, it was my sense of saying, I really need help. I'm desperate and I will take anything that I can to change and to be healthy again.
And how did you hear about Oasis? Uh, I had called around and actually my girlfriend found Oasis for me along with my mother. And, you know, we called Harrison and I said, can I have visitors and can I smoke cigarettes? And <laughs> He's like, yeah, and so that night on November 8th of 2023, I drove four and a half hours to get here, and I drove myself to Detox and said my goodbyes. And, and how was Detox for you? Oh, it was fine. I'd been watched Dahmer the whole time I was there. Mm -hmm. um, and I detoxed by myself prior. Um, I never detoxed in a detox, which is probably the most unsafe thing you could do when withdrawing from alcohol. Um, so I stayed in detox for 24 hours and then I finally came to Oasis and I dove into the program and I really just kept my head down, kept my nose clean as one would say and just took it seriously and knew that I wanted to change for myself and that I'm the one who needs to take a chance on myself. Yeah, and how's your experience been here? It's been fantastic. Honestly, this is probably one of the best programs I've ever been to. That's good. And can you elaborate on that a little bit? Like, what do you, what do you like about it? Uh, the sense of community here is really, really strong. Mm -hmm. And also the staff here and the faculty and the clinician, like whatever words you want to use for them. I mean, they're just fantastic. Okay. And, you know, they've been where we are here. And how has it been different from other facilities that you've been to? They treat you like a human. Good. Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, I'm really glad that I got to learn a little bit about you and your story. It was it was amazing to hear that. And if you guys like the story as much as I did, please like and follow. And if you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, please reach out to us. We want to help you. Thank you so much for your time and just, just sharing that with us. That was great. <laughs>